Okay, we've just constructed a graph of a function that has the factor, or that has the property, excuse me, that every time x doubles, y changes by a factor of 1.5. I've claimed in the first place that this makes the function a power function of the form y equals x to the p. As it turns out, it could be y equals some constant multiple of x to the p, but we won't worry about that for right now. Now, I've claimed that. I've showed you how to construct the graph. And I've stated that if you have a power function, then doubling x always changes y by the same factor for any given power function. The factor will be different for different functions. But for a given power function, this will always be the case and here I've constructed a function where the factor is 1.5. Now, I claim this. There's no reason you should believe this at this point other than my dubious authority. But I can prove this to you. I'm probably not going to prove it to you. I'm probably going to ask you to prove it to yourself. But this is a property of power functions, and you are capable of doing the proof. It might be somewhat difficult to understand exactly what that constitutes and what that means, but the algebraic steps and the reasoning process step by step is pretty easy, and I'm going to help you along the way a little bit. Okay, well, here we have now uh, an example of a function such that when x doubles, y changes by a constant factor. I want to relate p to this factor. And I'm just going to say that... Uh, factor is 2 to the p. Okay, that's always the case. And I'm going to suggest that you might think of how to prove this. Don't beat yourself up if you can't prove it because at this stage in your mathematics education, you're not equipped to completely understand what that means, but if you think about it, you might just get it. And even if you don't, it's worth thinking about. But you know, don't waste a huge amount of time thinking about it. Okay, so I claim that the factor is 2 to the p, and I claim that you have everything you need to know in order to prove it. You have all the mathematical techniques and everything. If you're lacking anything, it's in the idea of actually having to prove things, which even if you've completed a pre-calculus course is not something you're likely to have done. Okay. I'll also say if you've completed a pre-calculus course, you'll understand the connection right away, I think, or at least after a little bit of thought, depending on how rusty you might be, that P equals the log to the base 2 of this thing I'm calling the factor. Now, if you accept that this is true, you should easily be able to prove this if you had a pre-calculus course, and I certainly hope that if you've had a pre-calculus course, you've studied exponential and logarithmic functions. If you haven't studied logarithms, logarithmic functions, and the properties of logarithms, <coughs> don't even bother. That, co that is covered in a pre-calculus course. So that's something you have to look forward to if you haven't already done it. But if you understand logs, you should be able to prove this based on this. Now, proving this is a different story. So we have a sequence of results. Uh, if you want to find the value of p from the factor, if you want to find out what the value of p is for this factor, I'm telling you that you can take log to the base 2 of 1.5, which is the factor here, and that gives you the value of p. You can do log to the base 2 on your calculator pretty easily. I'll say that that's equal to the log of the factor. divided by 
the log of 2. Something that you would almost certainly understand if you've studied logarithms to the proper extent. Again, if you haven't seen it, you can put those numbers in and actually find out what the power of this function is. Uh, you might well know how to graph things with your calculator. Um, and you could do a graph of x to whatever you get when you calculate this value of p. <coughs> okay, I'm not interested in that, and I'm not interested in the graphs that you can construct with your calculator. Uh, it's terribly misused. Everybody thinks that the way you construct graphs is to do it with a calculator. That's not how you do it. Okay, it's not how you do it mathematically. That does not lead you to an understanding of the functions or of the graphs. We'll be talking about that. Okay, so I've written these in purple because these are things that can be proven or directly related to things that can be proven. So that's a very important property if you understand this scheme. And this is not a standard scheme for understanding power functions. Uh, as far as I know, this is something unique to what I do. Um, I could trace the reasons why I do this. Uh, it's a teaching problem that I pondered for probably a decade or more and finally came to this uh, realization that this model could be very helpful. Okay, we'll see if it can or not. It's the model we're going to use though. Okay, so we have this relationship in the idea that there are things here that bear proving. 